Good afternoon, my name is Linda Perry and I am attending this summit because I have a growing interest in the geothermal industry and as a native Nevadan I am extremely proud to say that Nevada is one of the leaders in the geothermal industry. I'm Charlene Wardlow and I'm Director of Business Development for Ormat Technologies and our U.S. headquarters is here in Reno, Nevada. And Charlene, our first question is, tell us how did you get involved in the geothermal industry? Well, it, it actually goes back to when I was a child and I grew up in New Mexico and we went camping. And wet kid doesn't pick up beautiful rocks. And so um, I would always pick up rocks and then my dad built me a rock tumbler. And I got interested, you know, you're out camping, you're hiking around, looking at rocks. And so I was interested in geology at a very young age, not really understanding that much about it. And so when I went to college at New Mexico Institute of Mining and Technology, I got an undergraduate degree in geology, wanting to really be an exploration geologist. I wanted to be out hiking around, looking at rocks, um, my love of just being outdoors. And even during the Arab oil embargo, it was very difficult to get an exploration geology degree. But I was very fortunate um, as an undergraduate student uh, I worked one summer at Sandia Laboratories in Albuquerque and they had a geothermal logging and drilling department. And so the drilling department was looking at developing drilling bits for high temperature drilling. And the logging division, it's not timber logging, we were looking at developing tools for downhole to measure um, uh, properties of the rocks and information on geothermal wells in high temperatures. And so I was working with engineers that were looking at that type of work under research and development under the Department of Energy. So I ended up going right back into graduate school because I couldn't get a job as a geologist doing what I wanted. And I actually went back and got a Master of Science degree in Petroleum Engineering. So when I, um, because I'd been exposed to geothermal energy in college, both at Sandia Labs, and then I also worked at Los Alamos National Laboratory also had an undergraduate co-op program with New Mexico Tech, and I worked two semesters at the laboratory in Los Alamos. And even though I was in the environmental department working for a geologist, we were out sampling all the hot springs, um, all the different things around the lab, and they happened to be doing the Fenton Hill Hot Dry Rock Project, which would now be called Enhanced Geothermal Systems at that time. So again, I got exposed to a different side of geothermal energy because they were trying to develop this hot dry rock project out at Fenton Hill. So when I came out with my petroleum engineering degree, um, I had about 10 job offers at that time. But there were several different companies at the time involved in geothermal energy, and one of them was Almond Oil. And um, I went to work for them initially as a petroleum engineer in Huntington Beach in Southern California doing oil and gas. But they were involved at the geysers in Northern California, the largest geothermal producing field in the world. And so every year when my review came up, I said, I want to go to the geysers. I want to go to the geysers. And finally, after three years, my wish came true and I got transferred up there um, as a production engineer. Very interesting very diverse background. You have a lot of different experiences, yes. which leads to my next question. What are some of the differences working in geothermal as opposed to other energy fields? Well, interestingly, as a petroleum engineer, a lot of the early exploration in the industry was done by the oil and gas com companies. A lot of them found geothermal, they were out drilling for oil or gas, and they found hot water, and what do we do with hot water, or what do we do with steam? And a lot of the technologies, whether it's drilling or production, We've used a lot of the same technologies from the oil and gas industry. And so there's actually a lot of technology transfer between the petroleum um, industry and the geothermal industry. And then we just kind of tack the power plant on the end to, to generate electricity instead. So I was actually able to utilize a lot of the engineering and the geology um, taken from the petroleum to, to the geothermal industry. And that's true for a lot of us that are in, in the industry today. A lot of us came out of the oil and gas industry. And can you tell us some, some of your career highlights? Um, well, working at the geysers uh, covers about 30 square miles. Just an incredible resource to work at. There's only five to six percent of the world's geothermal resources that are steam only resources. It's up in the mountains in the wine country of Sonoma, Lake County, north of San Francisco, an incredibly gorgeous area, very mountainous. 
Um, it's been producing for 50 years, and I had the opportunity to work with people who had devoted their entire careers to developing that resource. And yet, even after all those years, we were always learning something new. You know, every well you drilled was just a little bit different, or the chemistry was a little different. We were constantly trying to improve the resource or work with the regulatory agencies to try out a new technology um, that not only met the regulatory requirements required by our permits, but also allowed us to improve our operations. Charlene, tell me what would be the biggest environmental issue that you face in the geothermal industry and development? I think one of them, and it's a project I actually spent six years on, um, and unfortunately has still not been developed. Um, most geothermal areas were, especially if there's a hot spring, were historically used by Native Americans. And um, they can be, not only have cultural resources in terms of you might think of an arrowhead or, or a village or someone that lived there, but also spiritually significant. And if there's a cultural resource, you can often mitigate any impact to that. But I worked on a project that had spiritual significance to um, Native Americans. And that was very difficult because how do you overcome that? It's, it's something that's difficult to mitigate under our, our environmental laws. And unfortunately, it's not been developed. And I would say that was the most challenging because it's not something tangible that most of our environmental laws, if you have, let's just say you have a bird that nests, you can mitigate, you can move your project, or you can not do certain activities during nesting seasons, for example. But um, something that's not tangible is very difficult to address. And our laws are really not established to, to deal with those. And, and, and we worked a lot with the tribes to try and change the project. Um, and unfortunately, it hasn't been addressed. And I'm, it's a project I'm very fond of. I, I worked with the local people a lot. Um, but we just never got there with the project. So I would say that still continues to be very important to geothermal. And how do we address the Native American concerns for these areas that we would like to de develop geothermal energy? And Charlene, one more question. Can you give some advice to students or folks who are interested in entering the geothermal industry? Well, I would say do what you love. Um, you know, if you're going, I've been in this field almost 30 years. Um, so I would say whatever you decide to do, uh, be passionate about it, do something you love. You're going to put a lot of hours in. You're going to spend a lot of time with the people you work with. And so I would say be passionate about, you know, go into what you want to do, whatever it is. Sounds like good advice. Thank you very much. Thank you. My pleasure.